Delicious fruits like watermelon, apples, cranberries, and even things like nuts and pumpkins could soon be hard to come by. And that is because a major lifeline to their growth, honeybees, have continued to drop in population. Sure, bees can be a nuisance, but they are certainly a necessary nuisance. Now we're going to find out what all the buzz is about. Chuck Gold is an expert when it comes to honeybees. He has four locations with five to ten hives each. I've got all new queens in here, and they're, the queen, queens are they're laying real good. He's been in the business 20 years. I can move real slow with them, not too fast. They normally won't bother you too much. Selling honey, removing swarms, and of course, tending to dozens of his own hives. How many are on? The hive there? Yeah. Right now, I've probably got about 30 to between 40,000 in there. But Gold is used to a lot more buzz around his hives. Last year, he lost 46 hives, and this year, already more than 20. What's your secret that you're not losing 100 percent? I don't know. I thought I lost 75, so that's pretty close. I lost so many of them things there. It's a, it was a shame. I can't hate to lose them. Researchers say it's due to colony collapse disorder, or CCD. It's been a problem since 2006. You'll go out to your hive one day, and there won't be no bees or whatever in your hive. I mean, they just die out in the wild and don't never make it back. No one is sure the exact cause, but entomologists say it could be due to mites, a virus, or maybe even pesticides. No matter the cause, the result is stinging beekeepers right in the wallet. They just lost everything in there, and they had to reorder, you know. Uh, I normally sell packaged bees, or spritz in the spring, but I can't, th this year and last year, I couldn't do it. I just got to restock my own cell. Gold says he's only once bought a package of bees. That was in 1994, but this year, that all changed. He was unable to raise his own and ordered three packages of bees. Everybody in the bee club tell me I'm crazy. He's crazy in love with his job. What's your favorite part of beekeeping? Uh, the honey. <laughs> Extracting the honey and selling the honey, real pretty honey. Now, in an effort to help the declining bee and butterfly populations, the White House announced new steps to protect honeybees. And of course, you can help attract a few extra bees into your garden by planting pollinators. And Lisa has more on that. You know, we certainly can help repopulate our bees with a few simple plants called pollinators. And joining us today to tell us how is gardening expert Jenny Rosencrantz from the University of Maryland Extension Office. Jenny, thanks for joining us this afternoon. I love it when you bring all these beautiful flowers in. Oh, yeah. So first of all, how do pollinators work? Well, by having plants that the, the bees and the butterflies and all the other pollinators can reach and get the nectar from easily, is how the pollinators work. So if you have a plant that just has like one little solitary flower, that's not going to be as effective. But like for instance, all of these that we have right here are loaded with plants, like loaded with flowers. Like for instance, this lantana right here has mm -hmm. multiple, if you like red, it's good for the, the plant, the pollinators that like red. If they like yellow, it's great for the pollinators that go for the yellow. And most plants need pollinators, right? Yeah, actually they do. Most of the plants need pollinators because it, will not be able to go from a flower to a fruit without being pollinated by a pollinator. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of our food and drink. Comes oh, I from would say I would say that a good two thirds of ours does. Really? Yeah, I could be wrong about the, the actual figures, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of it. When you think about it, corn and wheat are the mm -hmm. only ones that I can think of that are wind pollinated, whereas everything that we eat in terms of vegetables and fruits and like you say, a lot of our beverages, we absolutely need to have the pollinators. And it's not just bees that pollinate. There's mm -hmm. other birds. There's butterflies or hummingbirds. Uh -huh. uh, there's even bats. Oh. And, and there's little mammals that sometimes do uh, pollinate, uh, little beetles sometimes. It just depends. And, and some of them, uh, people go, bees. <gasps> oh, I don't yeah, want bees. Yeah. But, you know, the bees are so busy working that they don't have time to fool with us. So what did you bring with you today? Well, speaking of bees, this is bee bomb up here. And this oh. is kind of neat because it has a very interesting, funny type of head up here. And that's the perfect type of funnel 
flower uh -huh. for hummingbirds and for butterflies, which okay. is really, really cool. And the bees, of course, love it too. Okay. And the bright blue right in front of you, which matches what you're wearing very uh -huh. nicely, that is cat mint, not cat nip, uh -huh. but cat mint. And again, lots of flowers, and the flowers last on the plant for a long, long time. What about the cone flower? Oh, I love cone flowers. We have cone flower right here. And what's nice about the cone flower is the pollinator will land on here and they'll go ahead and use this whole thing as a buffet so they don't have to fly anywhere oh, okay. which is wonderful and then for these guys once they're done flowering in the fall the goldfinches come by and eat all the seeds okay and you got some butterfly weed in there I do the butterfly weed is right down here it's a bright orange one and I think the bright orange kind of attracts a lot of the monarchs uh -huh. and the monarchs are the ones those are the butterflies that absolutely have to have butterfly weed oh. be because they're their children the caterpillars that mm -hmm. eat everything um, that's the only thing that they will actually feed on. So it's really important to plant lots of pollinating plants, but especially the milkweed family. And, um my black eyed Susan, the state bird, oh, or straight I love flower. That. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> now this is a this is a new hybrid one called Indian Summer, which is nice and bright. And we also have some of the smaller ones over here too. Um, but they're really again, they have that nice uh, round uh, dome that the butterflies and the bees mm -hmm. and all the other pollinators can go right there and just sit down, rest, have a smorgasbord, <laughs> just enjoy. <laughs> and lavender. Okay, lavender is uh, early spring, and that's this little guy here. Yeah. And it looks a lot like the hyssop that I have here, and the bees just adore the hyssop but and when if you crush the, the foliage of this one it smells like um, licorice so it's, it's kind of fun it's, it's good for all of our senses okay and you have some others here yeah. now this is lantana and what I like about planting that is that's an annual flower mm -hmm. and annual flowers by their very word they bloom all summer long mm -hmm. your perennials will have a period of bloom like the coneflower will bloom for a while and and then it kind of goes away after maybe August and then it blooms again but the lantana that's going to be blooming all summer long and that's so helpful for the pollinators oh, good information Jenny thank you so much make sure you plant some of this and of course if you would like to learn more about pollinators and what to plant now just visit WBOC.com, click on our picture at the top of the page. Well, many of us are also planting fruits and vegetables this time of year. And up next, we have a great recipe for you to showcase those homegrown beauties. We're learning how to make a blueberry salad with avocado, walnuts, and so much more. Plus, seared mahi-mahi. Delmarva Life, we'll be right back. <laughs> 